What are some ways we can keep pursuing mastery even after the instrument pilot checkride? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and welcome to the Instrument Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated, best-selling, highly acclaimed online ground school. I mean, I have a very strong bias. I hope it shows. I, I do hope it shows. You know, we got, we got families to feed and stuff, so we, we, we've got to push it, right? M0A.com, many ground school members know you're already listening to this. Some of you who are not members probably think I'm crazy, but that's A-OK. -okay. Hey, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, this is one of the rare times you will see me in a t-shirt. It uh, it's actually Sunday as I'm recording this, which is rare for me. Normally Sunday is a day for church and naps for us and the Shepherd House, but today it's a work day because uh, next week is a, is a relentless pursuit, we'll call it. There's meetings on meetings on meetings. There's not a lot of time for filming like I normally am able to sneak in. So the relentless pursuit is next week. So I'm sneaking this in to be with you all uh, uh, here. But if you're listening to this, you have no idea what it looks like when I don't wear a collared shirt. People come to me at, at shows and go, do you always wear a collared shirt? Like, yeah, kind of, almost all the time, almost all the time. Anyways, how is everybody doing? Happy Sunday or happy whatever day you are listening to this. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule. And you know what? I hope you're using what I like to call your net time. No extra time. Um, Tell me, by the way, where, where do you listen to this sort of stuff? I know some of you listen to it at work. I won't tell your boss. Uh, someone commented a few weeks ago while they're grocery shopping, they're listening to this. I hope it's not too distracting. Uh, remember, non-GMO things, right? Uh, some of you said at the gym, walking the dog. I, I think that is so great um, that you're using your net time, no extra time driving. I'm a big... Um, I'm a big listener of audiobooks. I mean, Magda and I are always reading, but if we're not uh, listening to something uplifting, it is listening to an uplifting audiobook while we're on a drive or whatever that may be. And, and our travels have been quite extensive lately. So uh, we're always learning, always growing. And that's really the topic. I don't share that to Im impress you. I share it to impress upon you. That's the topic here today. Jamie Beckett's done such a great job in this series of really if I had to put it in my own words, of pursuing more in aviation. Last week we were talking about tailwheel. This week we're talking about seaplanes. And I like to try to keep, I like to try to keep these podcasts and the video lessons kind of somewhat coherent. It's hard to relate instrument flying and seaplanes. But what's what's not hard to jump the gap between is proficiency-based items that pursue mastery further. How can this may sound like a stretch to some of you, and that's okay. How can pursuing my seaplane rating make me a better instrument pilot? How can pursuing my tailwheel make me a better instrument pilot? Both of those things, tailwheel especially, makes you a better stick and rudder pilot. Now, I know last episode, I shared some stats and I shared some things, and, and, and I, I was... I. I was just sharing the truth with you. Tailwheel flying is challenging. It's challenging for me, it's challenging for, for most. Tailwheel flying is amazing flying and will make you a better pilot. Learning to fly seaplanes will make you a better pilot. That's the purpose of this whole series is what is going to make you a safer, smarter pod? These aren't must-haves. Some of these, like seaplane, are nice to haves for 90% of the population. Some of us, you know, you live in places like Alaska, it's a must-have. But for most of us, I earned my seaplane as a way just to further myself in aviation. I was fortunate enough to join one of the very few seaplane flying clubs thereafter. That unfortunately kind of fell apart and, and I'm a non-current seaplane pilot right now, but it's something I'd love to get back into. I'm also a non-current tailwheel pilot thanks to all the issues we've had with the old 1940 J3 Cub. Something I need to get back into because it makes you a better pilot. It makes you a better stick and rudder pilot. And what do I mean when I use the phrase stick and rudder? I'm not just talking about the great book from the 1940s. Um, I'm talking about feeling the airplane truly understanding and feeling the airplane, hearing the airplane, listening to the airplane, becoming one with the airplane. That's what I mean. I worry in a way, sometimes we build this entire generation of children to follow the magenta line, and that's great, and that will get you there, but do you have a raw skill set to fall back on? You're just something to think about. 
Um, and that's something I ponder quite often. So what can we be doing as an instrument pilot, right? I, we just said, okay, seaplane expands our horizons. Um, how can we expand our horizons as an instrument rated pilot? Let's assume we have our instrument rating now and we're going to be working beyond. We're gonna be working beyond uh, the check ride because that's at the end of the day, my, my goal. Your goal, your short-term goal maybe to get that written test done, the monkey on your back, get your check ride done. I, I, and those are respectable goals. I give you the golf clap. I mean, that is, that's awesome. But my goal really is to make you that safe real world pilot flying in IFR conditions with your loved ones. And you have the full confidence in those abilities that you have. Like that's where I'm shooting for. Now, I advocate often to do your instrument in a, in a um, certainly a very capable aircraft, but usually the slower the better. So let's say you did your instrument in something like a Cessna 150 or 172. Hey, now go do some instrument flying and upgrade to an SR-20 or an SR-22. Game changer. Adding just 20, 30, 40 knots to those approaches, you'd be amazed how quickly you fall behind that airplane. Learning a new avionics suite, learning new aircraft. We can get into the endorsements of complex, high performance. Most of you Cirrus pilots will need a high performance, right? Especially the SR-22, 310, 315 horsepower, depending if it's a turbo or not. Um, high altitude, we can say that for another discussion. Maybe I'll say that for the Commercial Pilot Podcast, but for now, talking complex, and what's the definition of a complex airplane? A complex airplane sounds funny, has flaps, has a constant speed variable pitch propeller, uh, and has retractable landing gear. If it doesn't meet all three of those criteria, it is not a complex aircraft. For example, there are fixed gear 182s out there. Cessna, Textron did something very smart back in the day. I was sharing this with the online ground school members a few weeks ago. They did something very smart back in the day where they made an aircraft that had flaps, has a constant speed variable pitch propeller, but has down and welded landing gear, fixed landing gear, not a complex airplane. Most 182s, right, also are high performance because they're above 201 horsepower. They knew that if they had an aircraft that was both high performance and complex, insurance companies have a heyday with it, so would those seeking further ratings and certificates and training, it's just more training. They wanted to make their aircraft faster, better, carry more, but make it as affordable from an insurance standpoint and a training standpoint. And I, I applaud them and I respect them um, for such. You know, Mooney did this for a long time. You know, Mooney is known as the, 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 some, the M20J, they call them the 201s. Well, the 201s really had 200 horsepower because they knew if they kissed above 200 horsepower, they had to have a high performance endorsement. So Mooney, for a long, long time, just made 200 horsepower aircraft. And then they finally just said, listen, let's just do it. High performance isn't that, uh, that hard to earn. Insurance companies understand it more now. Let's go above that threshold. But for a long time, look back in the 70s and the 80s, you'll find 200 horsepower Moonies. And it was not a, a limitation of Lycoming or Continental, and they bounced between a few different engines. They actually, for those of you who are into aviation history, Mooney in, the, uh, in 1988 ran with a Porsche engine. Pretty, pretty cool. And there's actually a lot of Porsche aviators. Uh, that is a very collectible aircraft. I think only 56 were made, if memory serves me right. And my aviation history lesson serves me right. But they, they bounced between a few different engine manufacturers and even gave uh, Mr. Ferdinand and his Porsche uh, a chance, a uh, short-lived chance, but gave him a chance um, on that fun aviation fact for the day. So you look into all these things and ways I can expand my horizons are trying different aircraft. Now there's another frame of reference, another school of thought I, did, I would encourage you to actually look at as well, and that's this. I love, uh, I love buying aircraft. Don't tell Magda, right? I'm on, I'm on Controller and, and all the other websites on a regular basis. Uh, they're on my favorites, on my phone, if you looked at my phone. Um, seriously though, I love buying an aircraft and earning your instruments in your own aircraft. I think that's a great way to expand your horizons as well. So maybe you say, Jason, I followed your advice. I bought my own aircraft for instrument. What do you mean push the, you know, the horizons with, expand my horizons as the title of this series, expand my horizons with new aircraft? Well, you can still do that, certainly flying with friends or taking friends along with you to expand their horizons. However, you can expand your horizons by flying into new places. In 
During your instrument training, you lived your life, with the exception of your cross country, I would imagine, you lived your life within a bubble. You lived your life within a little bubble of, I shoot these approaches at these airports, I've shot this GPS 3.6 a dozen times, I've shot you know, this GPS 1.8 a million, I just, you live your life in your four or five little airports that you, you fly around and you shoot approaches to, with the exception of your instrument cross country, that's about the extent of, of your ventures. And that can, that can be good and bad uh, in a way, but it's, familiarity is nice, but familiarity can also breed complacency sometimes. I am after you expanding your horizons, and have you ever thought of flying the sun and fun? It's coming up, you know, we'll be there. Hope to see you there, Hangar D. You ever thought about flying to Oshkosh? We'll be there too. Hangar B, come see us. Have you ever thought about those kinds of things? Now, that may not be feasible for everybody. There's big mountain ranges in between you and I in some cases and everything else, but have you thought about making that adventure? Have you thought about the weekend trip to the Bahamas? Have you thought about the, uh, the trip to the Appalachian Mountain? Have you, just, have you thought about these things and getting out of your weather patterns, getting out of your local airports, obviously doing it on perfect days and everything else, but expanding your horizons? it makes you a safer, smarter pilot. Can I ask a question? And if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, certainly leave me a comment. What's the furthest flights you've ever done? And again, it could be a multi-day trip, it doesn't matter. Um, I flew to Oshkosh, you could say, or whatever it is. I'm not, I don't mean you broke the three hour rule, I don't wanna hear that, and you all know my three hour rule. I mean, what's the longest flight you've had, uh, including stops and everything else? You, you went from Ocala to Oshkosh, right? Over two days or whatever. Like, what is that flight for you? What's the longest you've done? And I would challenge you to add it to your, to, I don't like, um, some of the ground school members make fun of me and they, they asked me a stop. I used to use the term bucket list, right? I said, bucket list sounds morbid, Jason. Let's just, let's make it a, a dream list, a vision list, a to-do list. So I'm trying to stop using bucket list. So what's on your dream list of things to do. I have, uh, can I share, you, uh, share with you one of mine? I, I love, and COVID's really put a damper on this. You know, we used to, before COVID, we did an aviation seminar at sea. We'd go to St. Martin every year, and we would just sit on airport beach. Let me tell you something, airport beach, it's not the prettiest beach. It's actually very small. It's too crowded. The restaurant there is average at best. The roads, right? It, it is there. I'm sure there are way better beaches on St. Martin. But we go to airport beach for one reason. The airplanes, right? It's airport beach, Maho Beach. You type in M-A-H-O, I believe. You wanna Google it if you have no clue what I'm talking about. Um, I don't go there for the beach or for the sun. I go there for the airplanes. And we've got, I will, I, I pay for the Verizon International Data Package just so I can get four flight, four flight, I'm sorry, flight of where going, and I'm watching for the arrivals and departures. That is my day, and that is my, that is my perfect day in St. Martin. One of my dream list items is to take an airplane. I don't think it could be 2-3 Mike Zulu. I think that, I mean, it, I guess it could be. I'd have to make a million island hop stops, and I just don't know if I can be gone for a month. Maybe that's my own limitation, uh, my own mental limitation or business limitation I've, I've created. But I want that picture. If you go search, and, and maybe, um, maybe Coach Ray, you could do it for me. Go find one that's, uh, that's public domain. We don't get a copyright slap on it. I love that sideways picture looking down the beach, the planes coming across from, from right to left over the beach. I want 2-3 Mike Zulu in that picture. Not, not photoshopped, I want, the, I want Magda and I, over, I'm a hire photographer to sit right there on the beach and wait for us to come in. And I want 2-3 Mike Zulu over Airport Beach. And I want that blown up in the biggest canvas or printed on glass or whatever it is. And I wanna see it every day. Like that's on my, my dream list. Uh, what are other things? I mean, obviously, island hopping is huge for us. Uh, we have many other favorite places we like to go. We love the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area. We love uh, Jekyll Island. If you can't tell, I'm a big, um, I'm a history buff. I've become a history buff. You know, it's funny. I never pay attention to history in school. I'm interested in history that interests me, I guess. I love aviation history. I love business history. So I love to go to Jekyll Island. That's where um, you know, the, the Carnegie's and the Rockefeller's and Edison and Ford and everybody kind of hung out uh, as, their, as their winter retreat. It's just fun to go there and see their old houses and, and learn from that and love aviation history, obviously, as well as so I was sharing with you the Mooney and, and all that sort of stuff. I just love that sort of stuff. So um, 
I, I share all this to say expanding your horizons doesn't have to just be a $100 hamburger. It can be expanding your business. It can be just something you geek out on, like history. Maybe, have you ever been to First Flight, Kitty Hawk? I have not, and that's on my dream list as well. What are some other great places? Man, what about just, you say, Jason, I've always wanted to fly like into a Bravo. I've just wanted to land at a Bravo. I don't care if there's a landing fee. I know fuel will be 12 bucks a gallon. I've always just wanted to land in a Bravo. Go to Orlando. It's an easy Bravo to get in, in and out of. Take the family and go to Disney for the day and then come back. Like, how can we add an experience around this? Because you've been, if I can be kind of honest with you, and I don't, I, there's thousands of people that watch this, so this, this message may not apply to everybody, but for a good portion of you, you need to show yourself that flying is fun again because it's a lot of fun. Some of you have been so engrossed in training and it was like, and, and I love, I see this all the time in the M0A Nation Facebook group and I, and I love it. I love the hustle. I love that aspect of it. But I can also see the drawbacks of it. It's someone who says, oh, I, they passed their private pilot check right on Friday. Golf clap. Monday is their first instrument lesson. Also golf clap. I mean, I, I, I applaud that and I, I love, back to that word relentless, the relentless pursuit. I, I love the word relentless. I, I, I think it is great as long as it's a healthy, a, you know, relentless um, can have many, many definitions. I don't mean it in the, the savage sense. I, I mean relentless in the, in the pursuit of greatness, the pursuit of mastery, always putting one foot in front of the other. That, that's what I mean when I say the word relentless. And, and I love that aspect. But I think when you only take a weekend to reflect and celebrate your private pilot check ride, and you dive right into instrument, you forget to tell yourself that flying is fun. And training can wear you out, honestly. And who's ever felt that? Who's ever been burned out in business, burned out at work, burned out in a hobby, burn, burned out? There are a multitude of things burned out by, by being a parent, right? You're like, oh, my parents are finally taking the kids. I get a free weekend to breathe, right? I mean, we've all been there at various levels. And can I share with you that burnout has no place in the cockpit? You need to show yourself that flying's fun. You need, first off, you need some rest, but you need to also show yourself that flying's fun. Many people who do their check ride on a Friday and start instrument training on a Monday forget that you still need 50 hours of PIC time before the instrument check ride. Why not take a two or three month sabbatical, fly once or twice a week, even once a week, commit to fly every Saturday to a different airport that's 50 nautical miles away so you're building PIC cross country time. Take a different friend every time, a different kid every time, right? Whatever it is, take your spouse, take somebody different every time so you get used to flying with new people and new perspectives and a different airport every time as well. Show yourself that flying's fun. Flying's not all touch and goes and go arounds and training as you pursue more. I love, and I know you all resonate perhaps with that word relentless as well because you're listening to this podcast, you're clearly pursuing more. If you weren't interested in being a safer, smarter pilot, you would be, you'd be listening to some podcast that doesn't edify you and, and, uh, and, uh, uplift your mind and your spirit and your thinking and everything else. These would just be words, right? So I know you get the word relentless. I know you get the word mastery when we say that. And I applaud you greatly, greatly for that. So instrument pilots, will you do me a favor? You listen on iTunes or Audible, first off, leave us a review. And I just want an honest review. I'm not one of those that says it must be a five-star review. You know what? If I can do better in the pursuit of more and better. I'd like to know about it, right? Jason, you kind of ramble too much. Jason, the family stories are cool, but whatever. Jason, man, I love the stories, don't stop. Whatever is on your heart, it doesn't matter to me. If there's some truth to what you're saying, I want to get better as well. We leave us a review. Facebook, YouTube, leave us a comment down below uh, as well. Throw us a thumbs up, a follow, a subscribe as well. Thank you so much for that. A few little announcements. In Flight Coffee episode 100 is coming up. I'll be doing it live, you know, Magda and I. Um, we're, we're, in, we're very, very blessed uh, to be investors in Rex Air, a great flight school down in Naples, Florida. We're going to host episode 100 uh, in Naples. There's a Facebook event up where you can RSVP to attend that. 
Um, looking forward to seeing everybody uh, out there. It'll be online as well, don't worry. M0A's 15th birthday is April 15th as well. Playing a big live stream, so don't miss that either. So many uh, just great things we have in store and planned for you all. So uh, listen, thank you, instrument pilots, future instrument pilots, for that relentless pursuit of more. I'd be curious too, what's your definition? Don't, you look up relentless, I'm sure you'd come up with all the, it can have a negative connotation too. What's your definition, that relentless pursuit of mastery? How do you define that? I'd be curious to know in the comments below. I, I want you to go out there today with this enlightened mindset now, as you, as you look at everything, as you look at how you approach your flying, your friends, your family, your work, whatever that may be. And I want you to be a light uh, and just be, just be shining abundance in everything that you all do. Have a blessed, outstanding, abundant rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.